Hello, today we'll discuss hyponatremia. That is when we have a lower amount of sodium level. So hypo, hypo stands for low of something. Something is low. Natremia stands for, aemia stands for blood and natrium stands for sodium. We have a low amount of sodium in the blood. And usually the sodium level is between 135 to 145 depending on your laboratory. And when you have less than 135, that's a hyponatremia. And usually we are discussing, uh, we can divide it to mild, moderate, moderate or, or very severe. And usually when we are talking about severe, that's when we have less than 120. When it's moderate, then it's between 120 and 130. And when we have mild, it's usually uh, more than 130. Okay, then that's when we have mild. So for example, 130 to 135, that's mild. And when we have 120 to 130 is moderate and severe is less than 120. And we can divide also hyponatremia into uh, two groups. We have those who have acute, which is less than 48 hours. So a patient got this lower level of sodium in less than 48 hours or those who had it for chronic, so many, many days or weeks, so more than 48 hours. And the acute one is more dangerous than the chronic one, because in chronic one, the body compensated for this low amount of sodium. So it had time to compensate. But if you get this acutely, then the body does not have any time. So suddenly the low amount of sodium will cause a brain, brain swelling, so a brain edema. So that is something which is very important to understand. This is a brain and this is then enlarged. And in this skull, the hard skull that you have uh, does, not, does not allow the brain to really expand. So if the brain tries to expand, then what it will do is it will compress its own structures. And many of, many of these structures then will cause many, many symptoms. And we will, we will see now which symptoms. So remember these, I will erase this now. So mild, moderate, severe, mild when you have more than 130, moderate when you have 120 to 130, severe when you have less than 120, acute when you have less than 48 hours of these symptoms or, or of this lower amount of sodium, chronic when you have more than 48 hours. So let's see the symptoms now. The, the patient comes in with headache, nausea, vomiting, these are very typical signs. So hyponatremia cause all neurologic symptoms. Why? Because the brain is getting swelled and you get all the symptoms. So remember always to think about neurologic symptoms. So we have headache, headache, you have nausea, which will maybe cause vomiting, vomiting. You have them fatigue, very general, general stuff, but it's very important. Also some interesting things that you have muscle cramps. Muscle cramps. So muscle aching, gait disturbances. So the gait is very, very, uh, very different and very uh, uh, strange. So the patient starts to walk in a strange way with muscle cramps and vomiting and headache and fatigue. And the patient comes to you like this or comes uh, uh, by, by laying down uh, when, the, when, the, uh, doctors, when he comes to the doctor's office, then he, he's brought by the ambulance and uh, he cannot really walk. He has cramps, he has been vomiting. And the, the first thing you have to think about is that this is some neurological disease. What you do is to take some blood sample from the patient and you send it to the lab and then you will get then you will get the results so this is a paper and you have all kinds of values and then you see that the natrium level or the sodium level is let's say less than 120 it's let's let's say it's 119 okay and then you know that this is very dangerous then you ask the patient did you always have this low amount did you always have it for days or weeks? Where do you have your last laboratory result? Can you give it to me, please? He gives, he gives it to you and you see that the lab result shows that uh, for about two weeks he had the same low level. Then you know it's a chronic type. Then you know it's the better type. 
So chronic is better than, than acute. If he did not have any of these previously, then it's probably an acute and he had uh, these symptoms appeared very quickly. And if you have nausea and vomiting in an acute type, which means in less than 48 hours, then it's very dangerous. This can cause death. Death. That's the worst, worst thing that can happen. In acute type, the difference is that in acute type is more severe, which can cause coma, respiratory failure, respiratory failure, death. So this is very important to, to, to memorize. Chronic, as we mentioned, have around no, have nausea and vomiting also, but it's not so dangerous in this case. When the patient have nausea and vomiting in acute type, you can, you can be kind of certain that this is very severe and this can lead to death. But if you have nausea and vomiting in a chronic, ty chronic type of patient, then it's not so severe. Okay, and what do you do, need to do? You need to treat this with giving sodium to the patient. But it's very important that you don't give the sodium very quickly. And this will be discussed in another video. So the treatment will be discussed in another video. But I want to just highlight that something called osmotic demyelinization. Myelinization. Demyelinization syndrome. This is related to a too quick, a too fast sodium uh, treatment. So we had a level of, let's say, less than 120. And usually this happens when we have uh, values of less than 110 or less than 120. And then we, uh, then we want to quickly increase this. And then the patient gets this osmotic demonization syndrome, which means that the patient can die by the treatment itself, because it, it, it was too quick. You, you must treat it very slowly, please. Okay, not quickly. Then it's better to not treat it at all, but treat, treat it slowly. So, to, to repeat, what, what symptoms do we have? Headache, nausea, vomiting, fatigue, muscle cramps, gait disturbances. These are most common. But then there are also other stuff like we can see that patients are usually falling. So usually elderly patients are falling down easily when they have hyponatremia, so chronic hyponatremia. And this can lead to fractures. So please, if you, if you go to the doctor's office and you see that you always have hyponatremia, then think of, and you always fall, fall down and get fractures, then please try to treat this hyponatremia because that will help you. You will not fall then. Because the patients who are elderly uh, get a, a, a worse attention. They get an attention deficit. Deficit. So the concentration is better when you have a normal sodium level. And therefore, these elderly patients will fall and get fractures. Also, they, they, they can get osteoporosis easier. And what does osteoporosis mean? It just means that the bone is getting weaker. Why? Because you have a low amount of sodium in your body. And you have a lot of sodium in your bones. So the body thinks, okay. Let's compensate the sodium in your blood with taking some sodium from your bones. And what will happen? You will get osteoporosis. Because osteoporosis means that you have a weaker bone. You will get the weaker bone if you have less sodium in your bone. And the body now have less of sodium in the blood. And then it takes some sodium from the bone and puts it into the blood. And therefore, the bone is now weaker and we have a normal, normal sodium in the blood. And when this uh, happens for many days, weeks, years, that the sodium level is always decreasing a little bit in the blood and the body tries to take a little bit from the bone always, then the bone starts to be very weak. And this means that fractures are easier. If you have a weak bone and you fall down, you will get fractures very easily.
so the bone will break. So elderly patients who have fractures very commonly and osteoporosis, they need to be treated with sodium. The sodium level needs to be a little bit higher. You need to be in this level, 135 and above. Good, and the attention, the concentration, and memory tests, and all these are affected by a low sodium. So if you're elderly, please get sodium in your blood, because then you will not fall down, then you will have healthier bones, then you will have better concentration, you will not feel headache, fatigue, you will not have muscle cramps, you will not have gait disturbances, and the most important, you will not die so easily because mortality is increased when you have hyponatremia and you will not have so many other diseases because uh, the body is very complex. So if you have hyponatremia, usually you will get another disease. As we saw here, you get osteoporosis, for example. And there, there are other, more, more other complex ways also that you can get other diseases. So it has been shown that other diseases are more common when you have hyponatremia and death is also more common when you have hyponatremia. So once again, to recap, to make a summary, patient comes in and he has neurologic symptoms, meaning headache, fatigue, muscle, muscle, muscle pain, gait disturbances, nausea, vomiting, and so on. What do you think of? any kind of neurologic disease. You take a blood sample quickly from the, from the patient, you see that the sodium is level low, you ask the patient, did you get it quickly or did you get it slowly? Did you already have the sodium level uh, previously, like this low level? Yes, I had it like, uh, like for one year now. Okay, then you know it's chronic, then you know it's, it's not so severe as acute. If that patient tells you that he got it in one day, and he had totally normal level before, then you know it's an acute, because that's less than 48 hours. So, now that you know this, you need to treat it, but please don't treat it quickly, treat it slowly. Because otherwise you will get this osmotic demyelinization syndrome, and that will be dealt in another video. So, once again, hyponatremia is something correlated with neurologic symptoms. That's the first thing you have to think of. And never send a patient home with neurologic symptoms and a low level of, of uh, sodium. You need to take this patient into the hospital and treat it with sodium for a couple of days. Okay, thank you very much for listening.